Hello everyone. In this episode of Computer Club Lesson, we're going to talk about the Internet of Things. What is it? What will it do for you? How do we control it? Will it control us? All that's next on Computer Club Lesson. Hello. Welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. Okay, good afternoon everyone. Uh, today I'm going to uh, redo my talk on the Internet of Things. I did it about 18 months ago and uh, some things have updated, some things have changed about the Internet of Things. We can talk about those things after the talk is finished. Um, but I'd like to go through the talk um, right now and just to refresh your memory and uh, for the purposes of getting this in a recording, that's why I'm doing it now, because I didn't have a recording of it in the first place. And uh, so the first thing I want to say that this talk is inspired by a presentation by Dr. John Barrett at the Cork Institute of Technology in Ireland. Um, he's been talking about the Internet of Things for many, many years, and uh, I follow his work um, as, as it progresses, he has many, many inter interesting things to say about the Internet of Things. Okay, what is the Internet of Things? If we had computers that knew everything there was to know about things, using data they would gather without any help from us, we would be able to track things, count things, um, reduce waste, lost, reduce, uh, reduce loss, reduce cost, and we would know when things need to be replaced and when they need to be repaired and, or recalled from the manufacturer and uh, even in foodstuffs when they're uh, past their best buy date. Um, most of us think about being connected to the internet in terms of our computers, our tablets, our cell phones. The Internet of Things describes a world where just about anything can be connected to something else. Uh, it can communicate in an intelligent fashion. In other words, the Internet of Things is going to become um, one great big information system. And so we're going to look at what kinds of things on the Internet of Things are we talking about. Let's start at the top. The Internet of Things could control our home with uh, appliances that we plug into our home and then connect to the Internet. Um, for industry, product tracking and control, um, when, um, when a manufacturer uh, finishes his product and wants to ship it to you or a store or whatever, um, he can control his inventory, the, the store can control the inventory as it gets it, reduces costs. Um, smart meters in our homes, in our manufacturing processes, which are a lot of them are there now in the manufacturing processes, um, to control things like the process, the climate, um, just-in-time inventory, stuff like that. Uh, in our cities, traffic control is, is a big problem now. Uh, think about Toronto and 14-hour and, uh, gridlock starting at 6 in the morning. It doesn't finish up until 8 in the evening. Um, getting a better handle on traffic flows if our cars are connected to the Internet of Things. Well, everybody knows where every car is, and the traffic system would know where every car is, so maybe it could control our traffic lights a little better, help 
the flow of traffic. Um, other things, on the farm, crop management. Um, how many of you now have heard about drones and quadcopters and stuff like that, okay? This will be an enormous boon to farmers who can outfit their drones and quadcopters with sensors to look at their land in an overall picture of, is the crop too dry? Are we getting uh, infested with certain kinds of weeds and pests? Um, and do we need to fertilize? Is the crop coming along as it should? Uh, a view from 2,000 feet up for the farmer is what he really needs for his land. Just walking over his land, yeah, he gets a good idea. But that wide angle view with all of these sensors, It'll be an enormous boon to them. So those are the kinds of things that we're talking about on the Internet of Things, some of them. But let's talk about a thing, your body. Um, what kinds of things can the Internet of Things tell you about your body? Well, we already have devices that tell us about our sleep, that uh, tell us about our heart rate. The latest Apple Watch does even more than that. It can broadcast our heart rate to whoever we want it, want to have it, maybe our doctor. Okay. Um, it can detect a fall in, in older people. It's a small thing on your wrist can detect whether you've fallen down or hurt yourself. Um, if, you're, uh, if, if you're into exercise, your pedometer on, on your Fitbit tells you, you know, how many miles you're walking, how many calories you're burning doing it. Um, medical devices now, my wife just wore one a couple of weeks ago for three days, where um, she wore it for three days, it took her heart rate, brought it into a little device that she wore on her belt. It, that could be in real time sent to the doctor, but in, in this case, it was just information gathered and we took it back to the doctor and he read the results from it. But it could be in real time. That's an Internet of Things device. Uh, and on and on and on it goes. Blood pressure, all kinds of things. Your total activity during the day. Are you an active person or a sedentary person? The Internet of Things will damn soon tell you which one you are. And maybe you want to do something about it once you know that for sure. We can talk about your home connected to the Internet of Things as your home is a thing. Um, right now you can, you have a button in your car, you can open your garage door by touching the button, but what if your home knew that you were a block away and you're coming home to park your car, just open the door. Not for anybody else, just for you. Okay? That's your car connected to your home. And your, <coughs> excuse me, your car and your home connected together, Internet of Things. Load control on the power consumption in your house. Okay? Um, are too many things turned on at once? Do we really need our washing machine going right now while the refrigerator is on and maybe the furnace is going to kick in in five minutes? Load control. The Internet of Things will tell you all about that. Smart appliances, here again, load control. Um, there, there are schemes now afoot in Ontario uh, to, to have your washing machine connected to the Internet and you put a load of laundry in and you tell, your, you tell your washing machine, turn on when I have the cheapest power and do the wash then. And perhaps along with that, because we have all these windmills out south of town here, you could say, do the washing when I have the cheapest energy and the greenest energy going into the grid from these windmills. And so 
that the, the appliance would know, the smart home would know. I'm getting green energy now and it's relatively inexpensive. Turn on the washing machine. Okay, Those kinds of things are coming. Uh, lighting control is another one. Your house turns the lights on in a specific place when you walk in the front door. Okay, turns your kitchen light on, maybe your hall light, um, and then you go from there. Um, now you can control your thermostat through your smartphone. Okay, connected via the Internet of Things. This gets better as we go. Your car. And I mentioned the fact that your home would know when your car is a block and a half away. Open the garage door. But also, uh, on the Internet of Things, before you go out in the morning, you would get a message saying your car is ready to go. Or it could tell you, time for an oil change. You can put it off for a day or two, but let's do an oil change soon. Your tires are low. Your battery's low. It got cold overnight. Your car is not going to start if you go out and try and start it. These are the things that the Internet of Things will be able to tell you before you even start on a project like driving your car to the store. Now, right off the bat, we can see that there's going to be benefits to the Internet of Things. And one of the first benefits that is being worked on right now is better personal health through monitoring. I mentioned the Fitbit on your arm. The Apple Watch, which is on sale now, uh, is going to have all kinds of health applications built into it in the next year that you will be able to monitor a hundred different things about your body. Better personal health through monitoring. Um, your home, your car, um, anything else that you might have that you would use consumables in. Well, now I say consumables, groceries. Okay? In the smart home, the Internet of Things, it's going to tell you when you're getting low on milk, when you're getting low on veggies, time to go to the store and replace your Fruit Loops and Cheerios. Okay, you're getting low on those. And in the future, perhaps those things will be ordered for you. And you just go to the store. And as you're going there, the store realizes you're coming to get your groceries and allows for payment of those groceries as you arrive. Don't even take your wallet out. The money just leaves your account and pays for your groceries. The Internet of Things can do that. Okay? It can do that. It's not far away. Uh, we have uh, situations now where you can walk into certain coffee shops uh, where you've pre-ordered your coffee on your smartphone. When you walk in the door, money is deleted from your account for your coffee. It's being done now. The Internet of Things. Better security of the person. Okay, we talked about uh, a fall detector on your arm. Um, we've talked about monitoring your heart and stuff like that. Uh, but security of the person uh, could also be uh, that you might be put into situations that could harm you. Uh, maybe you get in a car with someone that you don't know that they're high or drunk, but the Internet of Things will tell you this person has been drinking. This person's um, demeanor says that they might be high. Are you sure you want to get in a car with them? Okay, The Internet of Things will tell you that in the future, as well as perhaps alerting uh, a policeman not too many blocks away that be on the lookout for this person because they are driving a car and they're drunk. 
The Internet of Things can do that. Use your imagination, folks. Anything you can imagine uh, can happen. But there's pitfalls of the Internet of Things. As I'm starting to describe it to you, um, who monitors the connected things and why? Okay, let's use that chestnut of someone's behind the wheel of their car and they're drunk or they're high. Is the Internet of Things going to monitor everyone for doing illegal stuff? It could happen and let's say that we as a society said well there's nothing wrong with that. I don't want drunks behind the wheel of any car. Rat them out, Internet of Things. Rat them out. Get them off my roads. But who's going to monitor everyone? And that's what we're talking about. Everyone. And why would we, we, we be monitored? So we've gotten into the Internet of Things for a few years, and everybody started to rely on it. What if it should fail? It's happened in the past. Things that we rely on fail for hours or days or weeks through no fault of your own. Maybe natural disaster takes out a good deal of the, uh, of the connectedness of the connections of Internet of Things. So who knows? Can mischief be done? Oh yeah, oh yeah, mischief. If it's connected to something, whether it's your computer, your Fitbit, your car, if it's connected to something, that connection can be interfered with. It can be intercepted. Um, right now, uh, security is such that uh, someone really, really knowledgeable can fiddle with the brakes on your car so they may not work. Or fiddle with the uh, cruise control on your car. Maybe it works too well. So, yes. Can mischief be done? You betcha. Here's our chair. Everybody remember the chair from the last time? The, the chair is the good example of how this works and how we can make it work and what's required to make it work. That chair can be anywhere in the world. It can be here, it can be in Australia, it can be in your house and you're here, anywhere. And with the Internet of Things, if someone is sitting in your chair, we would know that. The chair would have a sensor to say, someone just sat on me. And so let's look at the four essential things that we need to have the, inter the Internet of Things work in our chair. First, all locations and things must be identifiable. And with the now well on implementation of what we call IPv6, Internet Protocol version 6, uh, we have enough numbers now to essentially give a number, a location, to every grain of sand in the known galaxy. Okay, numbers without limit. So we can now assign a number to identify something without running out of numbers. All things must be able to communicate. And so there will be either wired or wireless connections to the internet through your home or through, um, uh, through other avenues um, but things will be connected 
so they can be interconnected. All things must have a sensory input. Think about the five senses. Feeling, touch, smell, so on. Okay, you can, we have sensors for all of them now, for the five senses. So you can, depending on what you want to do, in the, in, the, um, in the case of our chair, we will put a sensor on it that senses weight. And so everything from a puppy dog to a sumo wrestler, we will know who's sitting in that chair because the weight is now calibrated to the chair. And the chair, because it's connected, um, will be able to con communicate to the internet someone sitting in me. Now, we all have a credit card or a debit card in our pocket and modern ones have a chip in them. Okay? We could say on the Internet of Things, uh, because the, of that chip in our pocket, let's tell the chair who we are. So now we know someone's sitting in the chair and we know who it is. Your pet has a chip in it if you're a good pet owner. So the chair would sense that, well, a 15 pound dog is just sitting in me. Uh, let me communicate with the chip and see which pet it is, whether it's the cat or the dog, okay? The Internet of Things will allow for that. And the final thing that we need of these essentials for our analogy of the chair is to be able to control it remotely. Um, the chair does not have to tell us right away who's sitting in it, but if we can send a signal out to say, uh, turn on RFID to see who's sitting in it, well, then we have controlled the chair. Okay? So, we can, if we remotely control things, these are the four essential things that we need to have to to have our chair be on the Internet of Things. Now, everybody knows what this is. I told you what it was before, but we're going to talk about it again. This is a movie television prop. If anybody remembers way, way back, and, or even in reruns, this is the tricorder from Star Trek. And oh boy, could it do really, really neat stuff. Captain Kirk and the gang could take their tricorder and they could put it in front of a thing or a person or an alien being and it would tell them all about it. Okay? Who are you? What are you? Are you dangerous? Are you healthy? All of these things were told, and this is science fiction. When, it, when, when Star Trek first started, this is science fiction. Um, when it was held in the hand, it was about the size of this computer. Okay? Now, that same device is this big. Okay? The size of a cell phone. And this will even get a little smaller in days to come. So, the tricorder or the smartphone can tell us all about the things around us. Tell me about this painting. Who painted it? Is it real? Okay. The Internet of Things and our little tricorder, just hold it up to it, show it in the camera, and the Internet of Things will tell us. That's the Mona Lisa, and it's real. Who's this? Okay. Um, Neil Young, yeah, but I could hold my telephone up to it if it was Neil Young standing, sitting there, 
And, oh, that's Neil Young. Didn't recognize me. Gotten old. <laughs> but uh, now we know a lot about him, that he's a musician. He's a parent. He's an entrepreneur. He's all kinds of things. Neil would have to allow this information to be sent to your cell phone, but personal information he could keep from you, but public information, well, you'd know all about him. Hi, Neil, how are you? How's things going? What's your latest album? What's your latest project? And all of that would be available to us, just simply by holding your phone up, or not even your phone, some device that's connected to the internet. So we're monitoring things, your own health, and the readiness of things that you might want to use, everything from your car to an entire city. Is the city ready for you? Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. You're going to monitor your health, your heart rate, how fast you're walking or running, um, your performance for the day. Are you meeting certain goals that you set for yourself or your doctor has set for you? Okay. Monitoring your health in such a way through little devices like your little Fitbit or some other little device that maybe in years to come will be implanted in your body and it's no bigger than a grain of rice. Those things are coming. They're almost here. And as I said before, um, these smart devices can tell you, is my car ready to go? I'm headed out the door. Uh, maybe you get a message 10 minutes before you're leaving because you're, the Internet of Things knows your appointment schedule and it says, your car is not going to start, pal. Call a cab. It could happen. It will happen. we would be able to search for things. If everything has a number and that number is tied to a location in real time, then we would be able to find just about anything. If we've lost it or we want to know where it is now for some other reason. To find lost people and to get updates about your things. Okay? All kinds of things. So you could ask it something like, where are my keys? And your smart house and the Internet of Things would know that they're under the sofa. You could search for days and not find them, but the Internet of Things will tell you, they're under the sofa. Or the dog carried them off or whatever. Or maybe you put them somewhere. Even the Internet of Things would tell you, well, you're, they were in your hands last. <laughs> What's my child doing? And as I said before, in the Internet of Things and in the modern age, if you have a teenage daughter, you're going to be the first one to sign up. You can manage things. You can manage something like a city, or public health, or the quality of life around you for everyone. If you can, me the industry says that if you can measure it, you can manage it. And that's the way it will be with the Internet of Things. If you can measure something, you can manage it. Um, and so, the qual our quality of life will get better because things are better managed. Whether that management is through um, big data and the cloud and things like IBM Watson, okay, whether we assign that 
to a machine that can learn or whether we have a cadre of people to help us manage these things. That's neither here nor there. They could be managed. And we can control things. How to use our resources better. If your roads are a resource, they can be better, better managed to keep traffic jams at a minimum. If you're spending too much on electricity or you're being charged too much or you're using too much from that coal-fired plant that is dumping millions of tons of CO2s and dust into the air, you can control things better to reduce these things, to make life better for everyone. Games. Okay? Don't laugh, folks. Games are a big part, if not your life, your children's life, or your grand's, grandchildren's life. It's a big part of what they do. It's their entertainments. They may not look at the world as an entertaining place the way we used to, where our entertainments were to go to a, a Woodstock-like concert, okay? They sit in their basements eating Doritos and cheese balls, drinking Jolt Cola and playing Angry Birds. But that's their life. Our entertainments could also become part of the Internet of Things. And so we may not want to play games, but we may want to relive our misspent youth um, watching those movies and listening to that music and all of those things. Those are our entertainments. Not necessarily the modern ones, but they will be available on the Internet of Things. Okay. It's been 18 months since I gave this talk. And things have moved right along. We now have companies that are hawking their wares for monitoring the Internet of Things and, and putting devices out to become part of the Internet of Things. Um, we have uh, many companies now um, giving us smart smoke detectors that can do all kinds of things that realize when we're home and when we're not home to adjust our thermostats or dim the lights or turn stuff on when, when it knows we're coming. Okay. In the last 18 months, there's been thousands of companies pop up around the world trying to get a handle on the coming Internet of Things. And in 20 years' time, we may be, as individuals, the collective we, being in contact with between three and 5,000 things your own things, other people's things, things that are important to you, but perhaps between three and five thousand, each individual. This is an old slide, but right now there are millions of things connected. Well, that number, in a very short order, in less than two years, has become pretty near a billion things. Pretty, pretty near a billion. And when we look out 20 years from now, I said two years ago we will be looking at billions of things. Perhaps trillions of things. We have the capability. We have the will to do it. And there will be good reasons to do it. So, in the not-too-distant future, are we looking at building the utopia we've always wanted with the Internet of Things? Think about the possibilities. Um, we will have more food, more resources. When I say resources, I mean things 
like energies and uh, resources for the poorer nations of the world, like water, um, energies, all kinds of things. Because we're managing them better, we're taking a step towards maybe that utopian society where everyone will have enough. And if everyone has enough, then we will not be envious of people that have too much. But we get this utopia only if we do not abdicate our responsibilities as citizens of our communities, our countries, and the larger world. So with that in mind, please, we have to demand a say as citizens of this world. We have to demand a say in how these technologies will be used. Now, technology is going to be in charge. And so with that, you're going to give up something important to you or your offspring will. And we've given it up already to a large degree when we become citizens of the internet, and that's our privacy. Okay? The one entity in the world that knows more about you than anyone is your internet service provider. Because everything you type on your computer, if it's going out to the internet, they save. And so they know where you've gone, who you've talked to, what you've looked at, and from that can be established what, just what kind of a human being you are. And that's because you're connected to everything and everything is connected to you when you give up this privacy. So that begs a question. And it's an important one. Can technocracy coexist with democracy? Remember, technocracy is the few looking after the many. In democracy, under its best use, the many look out for the few. Okay? Technocracy turns that on its head. So with uh, democracy comes our politicians. And what a bunch they are. Okay? I'm not being facetious when I say that they are short-sighted, they're fickle, and they're profligate. And we've made them that way. I'm sorry, folks. We've made them that way. The other thing you have to look out for in the Internet of Things is mischief. If everything is connected to everything else, then the possibilities for mischief in this arena they're unimaginable, whether it be through individuals, groups, agencies, governments, or you can think of, corporate values, anything. The opportunities for mischief are going to be unimaginable. All right. Have I made your head hurt? Because for many of us, even, even the best technologists, all of this stuff is confusing. It's unclear. There are more and more questions than there are answers. And it's very, very, very complex. But get used to it, folks. It's already happening, as I said when I started the talk, things have happened in the last two years 
that far outstrip what most of the general public could imagine could happen in two years. These personal items that we're going to buy with abandon that will give us entry to the Internet of Things, global companies, major econ economies, they're pouring all kinds of resources into this, the Internet of Things. In the immediate future, it will be worth trillions of dollars. And when I say the immediate future, I mean in the next five years. I don't mean those 20 years. I mean the next five. And so we have to ask, is it going to change our lives? Everybody, everybody has to become more knowledgeable about this. I'm giving you the knowledge now. Please pass it on to anyone who will listen to you that there are great opportunities here and great, great pitfalls. And we must encourage our leaders who we're going to be voting for shortly. Those profligates. Every single one of them. We have to encourage them to consider the common good rather than selfish, short-sighted advantage. Yes, there will be advantage, immediate advantage, for those that jump in early with both feet. But just because we can do it, begs the question of, should we do it? Maybe go a little bit slower, a little more thought. It doesn't have to be, we don't have to try and legislate it out of existence. That would be the bad thing to do. But we can't let it run ahead of us. And so at the end of it all, we don't know what's going to happen next. We have to have people to tell us what's going to happen next. A little bit of a glimpse in the future. You don't have to tell us everything, but tell us something. And there you go, the Internet of Things. Okay, any questions about the Internet of Things? Things you've heard about in the last little while. Yes? Will my computer hold all that or will there be bigger special computers for all this sort of thing? <coughs> that right now, Brenda, there are bigger and better special computers to hold all this stuff and it's called what you asked about a while ago, the cloud. Mm. Okay? Yeah. Um, all of this information will be stored uh, in giant complexes. Um, where the, the information can be um, gathered at a millisecond's notice. It's already sorted and it's already uh, ready for us to ask the proper question and we will get a response if we ask the proper question from these giant data centers that hold all this information. Now, uh, there will be machines, intelligent machines, like the one we've heard about, Watson from IBM. Everybody knows what Watson is. Watson is, is the, mach the intelligent machine that whipped Ken Jennings ass in jeopardy. And what they accomplished there with Watson was absolutely stunning in the way that Watson could take these disparate ideas of, an, of answering a query with a question, answering a fact with a question, and understanding the vagaries of our language the vagaries of human thought 
and still beat Ken Jennings. It was stunning. And that was only the beginning. They've turned Watson's attention to science and medicine. Instead of a doctor having, an experienced doctor having uh, seen a thousand patients with particular kinds of cancers, Watson can look at the records of millions of patients with certain kinds of conditions, cancers, and draw, extrapolate from that maybe something that the experienced doctor with only a thousand patients didn't see yet. And so Watson's information now becomes extremely valuable by virtue of the fact that Watson can look at the bigger picture, not just a picture, the bigger picture, and give us information. And that's all done on servers and computers in the cloud, the internet. Any more questions? When every child is born, do they automatically put a chip in it and then brainwash it? <laughs> yes. Uh, the short answer to your question is, will be yes. In the future, <laughs> in the future, um, yes, in the future, um, when we say all things will be part of the Internet of Things. We have to include in that people That's right. and our pets. The pets are already. Yeah. But um, now there are certain portions and populations that um, by v virtue of their political leanings um, say that this is a bad thing. If it ever starts to happen, I will declare war. Yeah, I will declare war on this and we will pay handsomely, dearly to, to have this Internet of Things about people come true. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so. Well, no, you don't. You may not. Excuse me. <coughs> Your identity, in all probability, will be enhanced, not lost. Think about this for a minute. Um, when I was a young fellow, um, I suffered from uh, a condition now in young people that's very, very common, but at the time, um, 60 years ago, who knew? And that is a disorder whereby you can't concentrate. You just can't. It's not in you. And with that, perhaps, become, comes some compulsiveness as part of your makeup. In the future, People like that will not be lost early. I was lost early. I found myself through hard work, but if I hadn't have done the work, I wouldn't be where I am today. But many, 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 and you can probably make a list very quickly of people that you all know that essentially are lost to society at a very early age. Exactly. With the Internet of Things and the populations and peoples that will make it up, that is unlikely to happen. And so, will your identity be lost? No. It can be enhanced. Okay? It can be enhanced. I'm confident 
that that will happen. You have a lot of faith in the system. Faith in the system, no. The system needs constant scrutiny. But who's going to scrutinize? You will. Well, Your. No, I think that's part of the problem. We're going to be so much older in 20 years' time. And I notice my grandchildren don't question the system that much. They, they will. Happens. They will. Yeah, they do. They might have. I've got five of them, and they all just. It's yeah, um, and the, and in in my day, as a young person, um, we did not question the system either, until certain things, until certain things happened. Okay. Well, okay. The the though those things, yes, they they might have been a bit of an aberration of youth. But then there were a certain set of circumstances, and we all remember them, where young people stopped being apathetic and started to empathize. And when that happened, the world started to change. And let's call it what it was, war started to change us. Now, God forbid there should ever be another one, because all of us here know that that's a very, very bad thing for society at large, even a tiny war. There are no tiny wars anymore. But, yeah, young people will look around and say, you old fogies have buggered this up for the last time. We're taking over now, and things will be better. And guess what, folks? They got better. They got that. Look, look at the young people. They, they can't find work. They have no imagination. They go to the computers. Yeah, that's our fault. <laughs> parents today, like, they're afraid to say no, no to children. That's right. Well, that's yeah. true. It's not the child's fault 100%. No, no. They reach an age when they should say, but that's right. Yeah. Okay. I, I have a little more faith in the future than that because. Um, I see it in my own grandchildren um, where they're in their 20s and the, the apathy is there about what's going on around them, but I also see them getting angry. Angry about things that, they, that do concern them. And as a for instance, one of the things that concerns most young people when they see it is abject poverty. They get very, very angry when they see it. They don't know why they get angry, but they do. They only get and angry because they're on the poor side. If they were on the rich side, they would not No, they, they do. They, they, they do get angry. And and they and there is an empathy there. I, I see it in 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 my own family of young people, um, and it will not be much longer before they will take over from us and say, "Okay, you got this all wrong. We're going to fix it now." Okay, that's the Internet of Things. That's pretty much the hour. They will take power and they will be in charge. As we took power yeah. and became in charge and made a mess of different things. <laughs> you got that one right. That's Computer Club Listen for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.